Okay, welcome back to the Sound Raised like Hunting Griffin. Podcast. Even with the interruptions and the corruptions and all the things that we got going on today, um, we want to thank you guys because the podcast continues to grow. We've had super, uh, the uh, lots and lots of people have responded to the reviews. The next thing that we're going to ask for you guys to do is share it with a friend. If you got someone that you know likes hunting, let them know about it, and hopefully we'll continue to grow this thing Um it's been fun. Um, what the other one, do not hesitate. Send in your topics because we're making a big list and we might not get to them right away. Um, some of them we try to do, all of them we try to do in a timely manner. So thanks again for the reviews. Thanks again for sending in topics that you guys have. Um, share it with friends. We sure appreciate it. But um, today. Reviews are good too, as long as they're five star. Yeah. Don't go undercutting us. If you yeah. don't, if you don't think it's five star, then if, just if you keep if, it to yourself. Yeah, if you good. don't have something good to say, just don't say it at all. You yeah, know? I mean, exactly. No, you can tell tell us. Send us a message if we really offend you or say something wrong. Send it to us, and we'll try to see what we can do. Not saying that we'll change the way because we have an opinion as well. We're kind of like assholes. Everyone's got one, you know. So now Nick's got a market explicit. Anyhow, long story short is today we're going to touch on a pretty, uh, it's a heated topic, uh, without a doubt. Because when you start talking about a hunter or talking to a hunter about the ground that they're going to have to hunt, it becomes uh, very tight-chested, meaning they're going to hold it close and do everything they can to protect it. So today that's what we're going to talk about is are we losing ground? And what I mean that is, are we losing ground as far as hunting goes? And, and if we are, how are we losing it or why are we losing it? And what can we do to change it, if anything? Or is what we hear where all the ground is going, um, is that true? Is it actually, because, and, and I'll start with <clears throat> throwing this out there. I can't tell you how many people we get that right in that say, I can't find a place to hunt anymore. Now, I'm not going to put what they put on the end of it because there's a multitude of reasons. One is it's all leased up. Another one is the outfitters. Another one is you television shows all have it. Another one is um, no one will give permission anymore. I mean, there's a whole list of things that go behind that, but I can't find a place to hunt anymore. That's what we're talking about today. And so anyhow, <clears throat> who wants to start with the brainchild? As far as the permission one goes... I I think that to take a stance on it, the reason that that is going away faster is because we don't, and I'm saying we, not myself, because you've taught us to leave it better than you found it, but a lot of us as hunters leave uh, or leave it worse than they found it, don't take care of it like they should, um, shoot a cow on accident, and I say that because that's happened where I hunt, Um all sorts of crap that it's more of a hassle, liability, or um, burden to a farmer to let uh, somebody hunt as opposed to um, not. So part of the reason as to why it's becoming harder to find more and more land to hunt and knocking on doors is because of us. So that, Meaning that the hunter. T- yep. That, Be- that because takes, the hunter himself. Yep, a hunter. Or just hunters as, as a whole. So that means you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, last time when you went out there, did you leave the trash or did you pick somebody else's up? So for the for that specific one, that's my my stance on that is uh, it is getting harder, but it's our own our own doing. So but you can still do it. Uh, it for just sure might, you can. W- what me and Warren have done it multiple times. We're probably now over hundreds of doors knocked on in Iowa and Maybe out of all of them, five yeses, if that. So, yeah, I'm not going to say it's just that. a matter of going and knocking and knocking and knocking. Nobody says it's going to be easy. I think that, well, one, I'd be curious to ask this, just thinking of hunter numbers as a whole. Okay. So, right, we were for a few years there, hunter numbers were down. Then COVID came and now hunter numbers are back up. So, maybe that could have a contributing factor. But I guess this would be my question. So, if you look back to, I think it was like the mid nineties or the late nineties. That was when the most hunters were in America. And I'm going to ask you to speak to this because I was five. Um, so I don't remember all that clear. What was getting permission like back then? Like, was it one of those deals where you could go knock on 10 doors and you were going to get eight yeses? Now I know that we were in Montana. So that was a big, 
my my question is this: Is it really all that different than it used to be, or just social media makes it way more prevalent and it seems that way? So, like on the East Coast, when you live there, because I remember you guys had hunt clubs and stuff. Mm-hmm. So why did you have hunt clubs if it was so easy to just get permission anywhere? It wasn't, and 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 I and so I would answer that question with, I don't think it's it's relative. Meaning it, it's so it's just like it was in the 80s. So in the 80s, I lived in Virginia. Okay. So I lived in a rural, I mean, in an urban area, and I'm having to, I don't live, I don't know anybody, and I'm knocking on doors. And I'm probably in the same percentage, Easton, that you were. You know, I don't know if it was 95. Um, that might be an exaggeration, but I knocked on a lot of doors without getting permission. Then someone would say yes. And then what you have to do is try to take care of that and, and harbor that closely and and I mean that by the relationship you build with that person is not about just showing up once a year for the day that you want to go hunting it's about a relationship so that they invite you back they want you to come back however the other thing that happens there though and I didn't pay a dime for those grounds but the next guy that knocks on the door might not get permission someone's already hunting here oh well does that make the person who got permission first wrong or bad they're not paying anything. They're not, they just knocked on the door first. Right. You know, so, um, so to answer your question is no, I think that, and it's very similar to what I say is going on with CWD and EHD and all these other things that you see happening now seems way more prevalent. I mean, like we see EHD break breakouts and it's like, oh my gosh, all the deer are going to be dead or CWD is here. That has been there since I was a kid and I was hunting. We just didn't hear about it we, because we had, didn't have a way to – the only people we could talk to is the people that were our neighbors or a few other hunters that you would see in this local sporting goods shop. Yep. Other than that, we didn't know what was going on on the other side of the mountain, especially on the other side of the state or on the other side of the country. Now I can tell you what's going on in the state of Washington if someone pisses the wrong way and pisses someone off by doing that. And it makes it into social media. I can not only know what's going on, I can have a comment about it in the next 35 seconds. And so now I'm part of that. Well, I think, so I saw a really interesting news clip, newspaper article from like the 70s the other day or something like that. And it was basically every single thing, not not hunting related, but every single thing that people are complaining about today. Worst president we've ever had. Um, You know, a gallon of milk is 50 cents. A gallon of gas is, all is 45 cents. You know, the whole economy is going to crash. All of, like, every single thing that people, like, it, the exact same problems that we all complain about today, it was exactly the same 40 years ago. I think it, it just seems to me like it's just so, the information is just so much more prevalent that we look For at sure. some of these things. And now, it, it, I would say, I think Montana was quite a bit different for getting permission, was it not? Well, you, the big thing about Montana is, as opposed to Iowa, which we were just looking up, Iowa's got like 1% of the ground is public, you know, and not all that is huntable public. Montana is like 60% or 70% is public land that's open to hunting. You so, also have a state that when we lived there, I think there was, what, 600,000 people? No, it was just under a million. In, yeah. Well, they just crossed a million not too long ago. I think it was quite a bit less when we first moved there. I, I, I'm telling you. Okay, but so, either but, way. And then the land mass, though, is what twice the size of Iowa or two and a half it's huge yeah so your your density of people overall yeah, for is... sure so so it wasn't as big of I don't want to say it wasn't as big of an issue because it still was because a lot of your public lands are not as good a hunting ground the, the, the state doesn't own them the the big one that that comes up out there is a lot of landowners are able to buy land or rent land I guess you'd say from the state for cattle which ties up land that is actually public where you can't get to it because the, there's most people that don't live out West won't understand that, but there's no checkerboarding, meaning you can't step from one square to another square if, corner if crossing. You, you can't cross the corner. And so as all that a landowner has to do is own a handful of sections and then all these other sections are not huntable anymore, even though well, they belong to the leases, state. Though. That's they own the property. It's just surrounded by the way it's broke up. Exactly. It's it allows them to add to their, or they could own the borders of a sixty thousand acre piece of public, and as long as they have those borders, and there's no way for them to get to that. Here's right? what I would tell someone to go do. Anyone who, and I'm not advocating on X or Huntwise or Hunt Maps or whatever anyone is, take one of those. Go look at the state of Iowa. I mean, go look at the state of Montana or, or um, 
Wyoming, um, Idaho, those are a few that I know that they're big. Find some of your bigger ranches, and you'll find that even a 50,000-acre or 100,000-acre ranch, they only own like 25, 30, 40,000 of those acres. The rest of it is owned by the state, but it's inaccessible because or inaccessible because of the way that the state has allowed them to have their ground, to lease that ground. It's technically for cattle, but it keeps people out of their entire ranch. It's a big, big, big problem. It's a different problem out west than what we're dealing with in the Midwest or back east, where it's just small parcels of land. Things have been cut up. The, the one thing that is still everyone has to understand the number one thing that is taking away our hunting ability is just the fact of there's more expansion. of us and the expansion yeah. and the urban sprawl. Meaning people, not necessarily people. Hunters, just, yes. No, I'm saying people and, and building and there's, I mean, I could, sh- I can literally, it sucks when you look back when you're 50 some years old, like I am. And you look back and I could take you to places where I first rabbit hunted and I first deer hunted. There's and, a Seven Eleven on And there's no, there's no possible, I can't even show you a tree of what it was like. What was So what was your permission percentage out there, though? And Because I think, I know this is going to vary a lot in Montana because you had some stuff where people had 50 acres on a river bottom or 100 acres on a river bottom, and you had other people that had 30,000-acre ranches. I'm, I guess I'd have to think about it, and I'd say, like, I remember hunting turkeys outside of Lewistown. That was all knocking on doors. Yep. Um, Jason and I, one, but, one, but at that, that time, I will say that I got somewhat elaborate in that I learned that knowing a Jason Manley – buddy of mine at the time and he ended up later on became fire chief but he was a volunteer firefighter he knew everybody if i went with him chances are he might know someone and they might let us on not you know? what you know who you know yeah i mean it was that kind of stuff now when i went where i hunted whitetails up around the shoto area i didn't know a soul knocking on doors the two biggest landowners in there that everyone told me there's no way you're going to get permission to hunt them i was hunting both of them now, one was very limited. I had to go by his rules, you know, like you can only come in at this time. And So how I, did you do that? I don't know. I mean. Knocked I, on the door and Knocked was on the door and polite. And I was persistent. I didn't. Okay, it, so you just knocked on his door, though, and, and they'd 100%. already told you you couldn't get on there. And you just Someone did, yeah. Some some people, like, I, I want to say it was probably the firefighters that I worked with in Great Falls when I told him, I was like, does anyone know this neighbor, you know, or this up there? Oh, like, don't even bother. They'll never let you on. You know, okay. and, and and then the comments were, why do you think when you drive by there and you see 250 deer in the field? Because they don't let anyone hunt. Well, next thing you know, I'm sitting in a stand seeing 150 deer in the morning. And, and I mean, five Pope and Young Bucks a day is what I would average from my stand to see. I mean, going from living in Virginia to that, it was like watching the Milk River videos from way back in the 80s. I was in hog heaven. That would be pretty cool. Were it, you running into any other people? Uh, there was one or two other guys that were able to hunt. So probably nobody had ever even thought to ask. They all just assumed that. Well, they the might have thing. thought of it, but they just thought there's no way you're not getting permission. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are just scared to ask in general. Yeah, I think so. It's definitely gotten a mo- lot more prominent of people asking for permission, but I think people make it sound like they've lost so many opportunities to get on land because so many more people are now doing it. And now when they actually go try it, they realize, okay, there's you're going to have to knock on quite a few doors most of the time, depending right. on where you're at, to get a yes. For sure. And I don't think that's been I – don't, I don't see why that would have necessarily changed besides in the areas like what I was saying where hunters have ruined it. So, well, well I, I know I don't, some – I don't know how me and Warren got permission on the one we did because he was fed up pretty much with – like he was – granted, he just like – he does talk a lot, but he – was telling us all sorts of horror stories like I didn't really want to let anybody else hunt here kind of thing and now he lets us hunt the most out of all of his land so that's I don't know why he said yes to us but I mean my point is that there's plenty of reasons for them to be saying no don't give them another one well that's the thing is I I didn't know some of these landowners that I ended up hunting on I didn't know them at all yet I know people who own land that told me I couldn't hunt and the reason that they told me was exactly what you mentioned was I don't want to have to go out and clean up the McDonald's trash. I don't want to have to go find out where my cows are because someone left a gate open. And they don't find that until it's not, not, and it's never a good time to find that, but it's always at a very inconvenient time, snowing sideways or something, and then the, there's a cow or a horse not where he's supposed to be. Yeah. You know? uh, hopefully nobody listens to this podcast episode because um, I'm going to give away a golden nugget. I'm oh. not, not going to give them exactly how to do it 
But one thing I learned when East and I were really trying to get permission is sometimes you need to learn you got to change your tactics. That sometimes knocking on 100 doors and getting one or two yeses is not the most efficient way. It's a, well, it's not efficient at all. No, <laughs> no it's, a, it's a brute force tactic. But I think then you have to look at, at the same time, too, is what, you're, what we're talking about doing is being a completely random person going up onto somebody's doorstep. Oh, I know what you're going to say here. And then asking them to hunt on their property and to come onto their place whenever you feel like, and they don't know you from Adam. I mean, they don't know who you are at all. Opposed to, like, let's just say, you know, for us that don't own land, if somebody came up to me and they're like, hey, can I sit in your in your backyard um, and try and shoot that rabbit? I'd be like, absolutely not. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're about. So before you go and pop the big question, Maybe try to come up with ways to build relationships with those people before you're asking them to go and, and carry a, a firearm or a, a bow or any kind of weapon and kill an animal on their property because there's not going to be a ton of people that are going to be okay with that. From my experience, the ones that are going to be okay with that is going to be your farmers that hate deer. And guess what? That's the ones that everyone else is going to complain about. They let everybody hunt because they just want the most deer dead. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, but you may need to take a little time and think about how can I do this? And, and this does work. I know for a fact it works because I do it. Try and build a relationship with them before you go in and ask them something like that. And then, but that's a lot of work as well. Like you got to be ready. Like you're going to have to, um, you know, call them from time to time, maybe take them permission brownies, uh, maintain a relationship with them that lets them know that, Hey, you can trust me. I'm not a, I'm not a piece of shit. I'm not going to let your cows out. I'm not going to do those things. And I think that you'd be shocked at the amount of ground that you can get on. Uh, cause I do hear a lot of people saying it's impossible to get on ground nowadays. And, and, um, I don't agree with that. I do agree with it. Maybe it might be harder to, because I think 25, 30 years ago, people were just less crazy or it wasn't as apparent. So people were willing to allow just a random person to go on their property, but you have to remember that you are a random person to them. Unless they know you somehow, which I think that's why landowners, once you get in with one, then a lot of times they're willing to tell you, tell you tell their them. neighbor. Yeah. And yep. Yep. I mean, the uh, other thing, make sure you um, specify, this is where you get a little bit of a benefit, um, specify what kind of hunting you're doing, whether it's mm-hmm. bow hunting, rifle hunting, shotgun hunting, whatever is legal in your area, but not biasly to us, but we primarily bow hunt. I always open with, hey, I was just curious if you'd maybe allow any archery deer hunting. And they have been more much more open to 100%. archery than they are rifle, solely for the fact of, I think, mainly because they don't have to worry. Your arrow's going to go 30 yards, 40 yards, and lo- as long as you're not launching it. Um, <laughs> as opposed, they know. Yeah, <laughs> as opposed to a rifle can go miles, if depending on what kind of gun it is. But... Um, so that's one way, another way to kind of open them up like, oh, that's, that's, that doesn't bother me about having that around my cows kind of thing, you know? So, so, but I mean, so weapons can be one thing. The last thing that you want to do is, is not be truthful. And what I'm saying to that is if you hunt with a crossbow, tell them you're going to be using a crossbow. Cause the moment you tell them that you're an archery hunter and you're going to show up and you're going to want to go archery hunting. And all of a sudden they see you pulling out this thing that looks like a medieval, scope on it and everything like that they're like what the heck the other one that comes along with that is when you ask for permission you're asking for you Mm -hmm. or if you it or include your family if that's what you want to do or in the best case scenario warren talked about whoever's with you whoever's with you or or and if you want the secret tactic is i don't care if you got to borrow a kid from the neighbor Take a little kid with you because it will open the door a lot of times. People will, and it. I, mine was, I had you guys, and I did want a place to take you guys hunting, and so you'd go with me, and oftentimes it was, sure, you guys are more than welcome to go hunting. Yep, and for the main demographic that's listening to this, you guys are going to have the hardest time getting permission. Take your girlfriend with you. Take a wife with you or your kids because is what happens is when you're a, you know, 20 to 50 year old guy and you're standing on the porch of a little old lady that lives alone or um, a, maybe of an old gentleman, especially at night or something like that. And they don't know who you are. They're scared. Don't go at night. And yeah, yeah I wouldn't be going at night at all. And then the other thing is when you knock, then get back, like give them some space where they don't feel like, hey, I'm going to get mugged, you know. So 
But let but let's get back to because because I think we've covered some of this and 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 we it. Well, that's one facet. Is they're yeah, saying it's, a, it's still possible. It's to still get permission. possible to get permission. Absolutely, and you can. And it's not and it, like one piece. And it's piece. still happening get, today. Yes. Meaning we know people, including parts of ourselves, that have gone out and found permission within the last year or two in the state of Iowa, even when. So much ground is leased up. So much ground is owned. So much ground is not public. So much ground has been built on. There's not as many places to ask. Doesn't matter. You can still, if you do it right, you can still find a way to hunt it. Yes. Let's talk about what's changed with public. What about public? So nobody talks about this. This is what I find is interesting. Is everybody wants to talk about how all the ground's gone and this and that. Well, one, what is, what's been a major, major thing that's changed on public ground in the last really prevalent 10 years? You're talking about the mobile hunter? No. Or, or what? Oh, yeah, being Freaking able to Onyx. access. Find it. Oh, you Onyx, find it really stand. Yeah, before I remember, I remember as a kid, you coming home with books. Oh, yeah. Uh, from or, And I remember going to Fish and Game because I loved looking at all the animals they had in there. and they and had the getting, rolling maps and stuff yeah and it, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and that we was would a lot see, of fun <laughs> and you could buy five maps at a time from the block manager I mean, and not, then and you could push the button on the screen in there and, and then all the indians something. would come up on yep. there and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it was an yeah. experience to go there i remember I that as a kid too <laughs> but i remember going in there every year and you'd get the new i think maybe it was like what's their program out there for block, block management block management stuff mm-hmm. that so now you eliminated how many people that weren't willing to go through the effort of going to the fish and game headquarters every single year. Right away, you're going to eliminate a huge amount of your out-of-staters oh, yeah. that they're only going to go to what they know. So you were able to find tons of ground that was really good stuff that nobody else was on because nobody else was putting in the time or the effort to find that. Now you can find it all on your phone in 10 seconds. There's oh, nothing yeah. else that... That gives anybody an advantage over anyone else. Onyx has them even, like, you can download what I was having to go physically get and put it right on there. You can use it as a layer. Right. And it tells you where it is and what it is and stuff like that. So, so I think that that's Ban Onyx. <laughs> well, that's a joke because no, I need it. I have a I'm, lot of pins I'm on a, there. <laughs> I was a big fan because I can tell you one of the things that went on. Now, this is a different situation because it's illegal. But there was land that opened up when Onyx came out. There was public land that I was able to hunt that I had not hunted, even though I had hunted right next to it, because the landowner had fenced the ground, yep. and he and he had cut the, himself out. <laughs> he, no, he cut yeah, he cut him out, cut a big chunk of the public land onto yeah. his property. Oops, just gonna make a turn here. <laughs> yeah, and so then one day when I show up and I've now got this tool in my hand that says, okay, I'm legal. Not only am I legal here on his side of the fence, I'm legal for another 250 yards on this side of the fence. I th- I think still think though you'd have to be pretty careful with that. Yeah, for sure. But just I mean, trusting technology enough that it didn't glitch or oh, that's right, or Onyx or Hunt Map or whatever they're called there's is is accurate down to that amount. I think that's that. talking about stuff where it's a big enough difference that yeah, it's, that it's not questionable. Yeah, th- this wasn't can, a few feet. Yeah, you know, this was in the middle of it. But okay, but I guess the other the controversial thing that comes out of this all the time is. What I what we keep hearing people labeling why the ground is why there's less ground. Let's tackle one of the big ones, and because there's there's a couple. One is outfitters. Okay, whether you're whether you know if you're going out of state, chances are you want to go through an outfitter. If you live on the east coast or down south, and you go to Harrisburg, and you or you want to go on an elk hunt, you're going to do it one of two ways. You're either going to do it yourself, and the chances are you're not going to hear an elk. You're not going to see an elk. You're going to see a whole bunch of other hunters. You're going to put it yourself in a place. You're going to spend way less money, which, you know, great for you. But you're going to have an absolutely, I don't want to say you're going to have a miserable hunt because killing something isn't about that. It still may be fun. Unless you get lucky and find a spot or yeah, you know you, somebody that can get you somewhere that's yep. off the beaten path. But Well, but that's one way of going about it. And, like, and, and eventually you will probably figure it out. Well, I think that's what you're talking about there, though, too, is now if you're from the East Coast or from somewhere else and you're going on your first elk hunt, in my opinion, especially if you're doing this on your own, you're not giving yourself a good environment to learn. You are going to the most difficult possible scenario to try to learn how to elk hunt. So now instead of dealing with an elk that may behave appropriately when he's called to 
well, he's already been called to by 473 other dudes. So when you call to him, you sound just like those other dudes, and you and you're trying to make you're trying to get yourself to do the most difficult thing that only those guys that have spent a ton of time and figured out those little tricks are able to pull off over and over. In my opinion, you'd be much better off giving yourself a solid base of information from learning from somebody that knows what they're doing before you go try and do the most difficult thing you can. So, to, and, and I'm, I've been on all facets of this. I grew up in the East, I, and, and I dreamed of going elk hunting had no clue how to start, how to even, and I d- didn't think I could ever afford it, you know, because even to go just do a DIY type deal still gonna cost a couple thousand dollars because the tag alone is a thousand and fuel and everything else. And I was like, I'll never be able to afford to go do that. Later on in life, I end up living out there. And then later on in life, I ended up doing some guiding and outfitting myself. What I would tell someone is if you truly want to do it and you want to you want a great experience that one time. It's not something that you think you're going to be able to go do multiple times. Save the money for another year or two or three years or whatever it takes to go through an outfitter. Do your homework. Find the right outfitter, like what you're talking about. Find a place that doesn't overtake the hunters because outfitters will do that too. They'll hunt something way too much. Understand that some of them might be on public ground, but like a New Mexico public ground elk hunt, still good public land in Montana, still good if it's in the right places, you know, but there are places that you, and so you still have to learn, but I would tell someone spend a little more money that first time to get that experience and understand, and then start looking at doing your DIY stuff. So those are great tips, but is outfitting affecting your ability to go get land to hunt, like primarily in the Midwest or Iowa? In in the Midwest in Iowa, I don't know that I can Our say that. Are outfitters affecting the ability to get land? Well, the moment that there is one, there is an effect. Is it a large enough effect that it's really affecting me? I don't think that they're significant enough. I don't think that they're taking up enough ground, um, I, taking I can, enough hunters that they're overkilling the deer or something like that. I can um, think of two off the top of my head that I hunt near or have hunted near, one being... Warren just told me that it's a lot more than I thought, but has a ton of land. And then the other one, from what I know, has quite a bit. And, I mean, granted, I don't go over there to that section because I know that they or they're outfitting it or whatever. But at the same time, I haven't had any issues getting the land that I'm hunting now that is near it. So it's not like it's completely – I really don't think it's affected me all well, that much. I've been able to find <laughs> land still. Here's the one thing that I learned a long time ago, and I learned it in Montana because there was a gentleman that I talked to about hunting, and he said no. This was another a no that I got, and then it come to find out he said, "I'm saying no because we work with an outfitter." And I was, and so I'm in the boat of, oh well, outfitters have all the ground, and I don't get to hunt here. That gentleman wasn't going to let me hunt there regardless. I yeah. didn't know him or anything like that. It didn't matter whether the outfitter was paying him or someone else was paying him. He was only going to let someone hunt there by paying him. Yep. And I didn't have the money to pay him at the time. So that's not a, a, the person who's paying. That's the person who owns the ground. Well, and I and think, if that's their choice. So I think another thing that gets – so one, that's really good to put in perspective that a landowner that knows that they can make money from the deer hunting or the elk hunting or whatever the hunting may be, the chances that they're going to ever let anybody be going on there for free is probably not very good. Um, they're going to always be making money from it because they can make money from it. The thing that I think the next part of this that everybody says is, well, they they make the prices so crazy for everybody else that no one else can afford to go lease property or anything like that. Well, this would be my question to you on a from a business perspective. It's not going to be – they're not going to make any money. If they go and they, and they start paying – 50 bucks an acre for a lease, right? Now he's got to charge his deer hunters $10,000 or something to be able to clear any money. So your outfitters probably aren't going to drive your prices super ridiculous on leases because if they did that, they couldn't make any money themselves. Could be. I mean, I don't, unless it's just math. I mean, that's just, that's just basic economics. Like if, if they go and they pay too much for ground and now these other people think that they can get this amount per ground, Mm -hmm. One, there's going to be very few other people that can afford that. Two, the outfitter is not going to be in business very long because he's not going to be able to cash flow yeah. anything. 
And I would, I'll use our example where I was, uh, when I was elk hunting or when I was guiding for elk, the outfitter that I worked with, we had about 12,000 acres that we were hunting. He didn't pay them a whole ton of money, but I can tell you right now, no one else was going to get to hunt there. He had a reputation or a rapport with that landowner is the only reason that we were getting to take a few hunters in there. Now he was paying them by the, by the animals that we killed, not by the amount of land. But someone could not have come in there. I believe that with all my heart, I know the gentleman that owned the ground. And if I had walked in there not knowing him today and said, I'll pay you quadruple what this guy is paying you, he would have said no. Mm-hmm. And I still wouldn't have been able to hunt there. Yep. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's the whole thing is that, that a lot of this we just want to blame. Well, there's people that are the other way too. We've met people that will never lease. They will never Absolutely. lease. Yep. Well, that, uh, that's the other point I was going to say is that we hear all the time, well, you you guys own land or you lease a bunch of land or you do this or that or I lost a bunch of land to somebody leasing, which I get 100%. But at the same time, for my own sake, because I now for the past year or two had felt like, okay, if I, I could go get maybe like 50 to 100 acres or something, possibly depending on how much they're going to charge me to lease my own piece of land. I thought that would be awesome. I think it was harder for me to go find somebody willing to lease than it was for me to find permission. That's so, good and that's with money on the table. So right. the whole thing of oh, lease people, people lease everything. Unless you just have money, a ton of ton of money to like really bribe somebody. I don't see how that is affecting the hunting well, as far I, as what land you can get onto because I don't run into it, and I'm not hunting. Just I'm not hunting the stuff that you've worked and owned and stuff like that. I'm doing exactly what the normal person is doing and going knocking on doors. I'm normal. Yeah, you've been normal, but you've worked for 40-plus years to finally get to a dream yeah, of in, getting land. Right, I'm just still in a different... Not like, why don't we tell everybody how much ground raised hunting owns? We own 170 acres total. 100, wow. 100, I know everybody is acres. shocked. <laughs> Because according to half of TikTok, it must be nice to have our millions of acres. Right, or and 5, I am so acres. upset that they aren't right. Because I'd be, I would be, it, yeah, I'd be doing the more. violin trend with uh, with plat maps of our freaking land. <laughs> that was the case. If if <laughs> Dad's not going to know what that is. <laughs> no, I know that I if I had my choice, I would own more. But I that's what I've been able to right. afford at this point. So I think where this stems from, though. So then let's just go ahead and attack the TV shows. The TV shows. And the outfitters are the reason that you can't get on ground anymore. So, one, let's just talk about, let's just play devil's advocate for a second and say that your leases, right? So, I guess, who started doing leasing ground? When did that start happening? I feel like... It's been going on... Well, I can tell you... Started with farming, probably. Well, I mean, I can tell you that I belong to a hunt club back in Virginia. That would have been in 87 or 88. Did they buy that ground or did they lease it? No, they leased it. Okay, so. so they were doing it then. And when I say they, it was a guy that went out and he found multiple places in multiple counties and leased the ground. Then he, like, you basically belong to a hunt club. And I don't know how many of us were in the hunt club, never met the other guys. Everybody pays something to be in the club, and then they got access to all this ground. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and you would call him, and he would tell you, okay, this piece of ground is open. And okay. then even the pieces of ground were marked like an A, B, C, or D. And so you got Section A. That's where you stayed that day. Okay. So now we know that leasing it, and so it's probably been much earlier than that, but at least yeah. since the 80s. For sure. So now let's say the only thing that could have changed between the 80s and early 2000s is then there was TV, and, and hunting TV got much more popular. So maybe, which I don't, was the juries or Realtree Monster Bucks or anybody really talking about all the leases they had? Like where was that getting publicized? I, I You know, I, I guess out in Montana you did hear some of the – um, real tree and them when they leased along the Milk River and stuff like that. There was, but again. So my question is, did TV start talking about leases and let all the landowners know? No. Because that's where the root of the question comes down to is, when did the landowners know that there was value in the wildlife on their property? I, I don't think that's what the premise of saying TV shows have ruined. I think it's more so the fact that TV shows have the access to do it, not necessarily are telling everybody to well, go just, lease land. No, that's when... That's that's why I'm playing devil's advocate because there would be a much larger impact by by saying that TV brought leasing to the forefront. Now all of a sudden everybody knew. Now some farmer watched it and he said, "Holy shit! 
I can charge somebody five thousand dollars to come shoot my deer. Well, the other and the, my point is that I don't think we're assuming landowners are really stupid if they didn't already figure that out with that being around from the eighties. You can't sit here and tell me that because TV, that's the only reason that people found out that they could lease their ground out to hunting and make money. Well, I think that you're missing. Well, they've been doing it with farming I, forever. But that's I my think point. you're missing so they, it would have happened one no matter major what. element. You're missing one one major element that the misconception. TV means you're rich. That's my point. Yeah. It was TV saying that you have the ability to do it. Yeah, right. but you're talking about ground that you're on. You're talking about grounds that TV's shows are leasing up. No, but, and, no and I'm I saying think, what Dad's saying. That what, they what, are the, what I think people are referring to is, okay, you're on TV, you're making a lot of money, so either you bought it or you're leasing it, and you can pay whatever that yes. they're asking for. Yeah. And that simply is not – there is a limit. There is, will I pay for ground to lease? Yes. Why? Because – I don't like to deal with, I can't deal with it. When this becomes part of what we do for a living, then I can't have outside entities and things like that. Out of your control. Out of my control. Trust me, I, I, if I had my choice, I would still hunt all public for elk. All, that's all I would do. It costs more to produce a television show to get all the legalities and everything that you can get on, to film on public ground. Because you have to buy, especially daily like passes. Daily passes that acqu- accumulate to like three, four thousand dollars a day sometimes. On so national forest. On national yeah. forest, state ground, uh, BLM, they all charge a separate fee. And if you don't know that you're going to stay on any one, you have to have them all covered. Yep. If they're, if all of it is there, so that's one thing. Like out west, and then when you get it back here, same thing. If I and we hunt some places where we share land with other people. And in certain situations, it works out phenomenally. We talk to them. I'll, I'll bring an extra stand, put it behind theirs, or work with them, or I call them and say, hey, um, we're not hunting in there. You're welcome to go sit in our stand. We're not hunting. And, and that, to me, works phenomenally. I love I, it. I, I love I, it when we have that rapport with people because we share the, the trail cameras and things like that with them. Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> you. <laughs> Whatever. On your no, topics. No, but what I'm getting at he is, is on one today. No, but what I'm getting at is then what happens though is you get another place that someone doesn't like what you're doing, you, because they think that we because I because I'm going to be hunting on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or a Thursday or Friday, or a Saturday or Sunday. This is what you call soapbox, but I'm supporting. So keep well, going. Well, all I'm saying is and I'm he's on it. I'm going to be doing it, and if I'm going to be doing it, then you might run into me. You might not. But someone gets mad that I do it more than they do, or I put more effort in that they do, and I kill something, and then all of a sudden they're angry. So then on that, that scenario, you run into something where it's like, oh, well, he's doing this. So now we have someone that is either talking to the landowner, or the landowner is like, "What do you, I didn't realize you were going to be out here that much. When you lease the ground, they understand you're c- coming. You're in, in, and I am like way more upfront with people. When, than I ever was because I've been through enough of it to be able to say, this is what I'm doing. This is, this is a business for me and as much as I love it, but this is part of a business for me. So this is what we're doing. Are you okay with that? And that has worked out phenomenal. So how much ground then are, how much ground are the TV shows and do we include digital people in there now? YouTube That's people? That's what I was wondering and if you're talking I, about like, I would Anybody think, that I think films something. They're leasing ground. Everybody too. films something. Yeah, now. but what do you? What, what you about know? the engineer? What well, about the, what the, about the politician? Yeah, there's what about way the, more. There's way more people in the general public leasing up a total amount of ground than TV shows. But I'm just saying, let's let's just try and group as many TV shows. Well, Are we counting minute, digital those, guys? Those damn firefighters. Because I know a group of firefighters that went together to lease a piece of ground. Now that just you pit- don't hear <laughs> that on Facebook though. Nobody's but like those right. freaking but, firefighters. But that they were smart. The, and they put their money together and said we wanted to have a private Are you place. you referring to yourself? No, I, I'm oh. not part of that. <laughs> no, not at all. So Damn Brett. <laughs> it's not Brett either. I won't tell you who it is because it's not fair. Brett would be like, I don't give a shit. Say whatever you want. Right. <laughs> um, but if you, so, so television include, shows. Okay, television shows. And let's include, the, we don't let's know. include people on YouTube or anything else. So okay. it's the biggest net that we can cast. In, so in, let's just take Iowa, for instance. We know roughly what we're leasing, and then I know what most of these other guys own and stuff. And um, I think a lot of them are, if you went everybody that they are associated with and everything they've managed to pull together, maybe three 
two to 2,500, 3,000 acres that they own a piece. Okay. Some maybe Let, let's, let's just go let's four go, or five, and you should be no. Way over. Let's give them ten grand, ten thousand acres. Okay, ten thousand acres. Te- each each television show or YouTube influencer, whatever you want to call them, has ten thousand acres. Let's just say and there's we're speaking to just Iowa right now. Right? Just speaking to Iowa. And let's okay. say there's twenty of them in the state because I only know of honestly five or six. And then we got to make sure we throw. Do we get ten thousand acres now too? Yeah, we're we're we just Sweet. quadrupled it, <laughs> or more than quadrupled. We like times exponential dares. I gotta go, guys. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go let the neighbor know that that's ours now. <laughs> okay. But but if you took that number and you said ten times twenty, we're talking two hundred thousand acres. 200. How much ground has has the television people just taken from Iowa? And we know this because we actually looked up the the amount of square acres that there are in Iowa 36 million 36 million acres and they took up 200,000 and now in, not in public land in Iowa there is the state of Iowa owns a total of 390,706 acres so just under 400,000 acres yes okay that's public ground not all of that public ground is accessible to hunt we did it 240 percent of the total conservation and recreational lands is open to public access in Iowa Okay, so roughly 180,000 acres is, so what we're saying is, and we went way high on the television side, that they are taking up about the same amount of land as what the public, or what the state offers for public hunting. Which is 1% Which of is the entire. Less than 1%. Less than 1%. I'm just going to throw it out there and probably piss some people off with it. If you're running into the all issues left and right and stuff of not being able to get land, you're either lazy, a prick, or however, whatever other reason. Because if you are nice, polite, and you knock on enough doors, you're going to get land. It's not that, I mean, it's not fun. I don't enjoy doing it. I spend weekends doing it, driving around. You waste a lot of gas, but you meet a lot of people. You can get a yes or no here. You can find gold mines that other people haven't found that don't really hunt. There's all sorts of different things you can do with it. So if you're going to sit here and say you can't get on land because it, just blame everybody else, get off the couch and go do it a little bit better. Ooh, How about that? It's so annoying now that I'm thinking about it. I've heard so many people complaining about it. I'm like, seriously? There's get over it. Well, the, get off Facebook for a day for once in your life and go freaking do it. The thing I was thinking about a minute ago that when you were on your soapbox that was kind of hysterical is – you know, here it's changed. Say, like, used to. Now everybody tells you, go and uh, let's see you guys go kill a deer on public. Let's see you guys go kill a deer on public. And I'm thinking back to several years ago. This is mostly when we moved, lived in Montana still. And they hated you for being on public <laughs> because they're like, you guys are showing all the spots. Get right. off of public, you know? And so it's like, you're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. Like, what do you, what do you, what a pe- which I think that's where we have to remember that the the people fortunately I do believe that the the majority the majority that are trolls to that level you're just never going to be able to please them that's 1% that they're going to be mad at you if you do this they're going to be mad if you do that because they're lazy and they're jealous and they just aren't willing to go do anything for themselves so they're the only ones that have the amount of time to comment on that stuff but even the let's t- let's we we talked about the television shows let's talk about the outfitters yeah. Okay. Because they did. T- t- they're doing it for a living. They're they're leasing land for a living. Yep. You know. And um, if there is anybody that probably can can go higher on prices, like pay more for a lease, they, it would be them. Outfitters can pay more for a lease than a TV show. I'm not saying that. I'm telling when I was talking about the economics of it earlier. I'm not saying that they can't go higher than maybe the average guy, but I am saying they can't go ridiculously high. Right. Or they're going to price themselves out too. I, I don't really time, have any I don't idea. See much sympathy for that either because. I think the average person, it, it would take time, the average person could start outfitting. Absolutely. That's the whole it's thing. It's called save, you, if you save it for a year or two, and you start with a small chunk well, of land many, in Iowa, as long as you have deer there, which it's Iowa, you're going to have deer there, go see if you can lease 100 acres, and you sell two hunts. How many well, outfitters, start, though, right are there. even on, I don't, how many outfitters do we even know of in Iowa? I can think of like. I can only think of like oh. five off the top of my head that are. Who knows? I, I can mean, think I of one that. Uh, does have a lot of ground uh, around here, like fifteen, twenty thousand a yeah. piece himself. Which I yeah. think he's though like he's well way into above everybody else. Everybody else I know is under ten, well under. Okay, and so you said five. I, I know. Of, I don't know how many are there. I would think that the DNR would have some kind of list. Okay, so you, let's just say that's another hundred thousand. Then, so now we're at a total of two hundred thousand acres. 
between between TV and Outfitters. There's more than five, but yeah, there's. I mean, well, but, I think the hundred thousand though would be. Oh, between all of them. Yeah. Yeah, you might be close. Yeah, I, don't I still don't think it matters. You put as many numbers as you want to it. Drive to the neighbor. Holy yeah, cow! This is, all I'm saying though is this is where you're. This is where you're going to get an argument. Is people are going to say the reason the land prices are up and that leases are up is because they see it on TV and that increases the the value of it. Which I'm telling you right now, when we get when we get starting into land prices, there is nobody with TV shows either that are buying at least from the money they're making from their TV show <laughs> that is buying ground at seven thousand dollars. Oh an no, they they have an alternative income somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so the people that are that are launching the prices up that high are not people that are on. Go to the White House on TV. Complain to them. This isn't our this isn't our fight to fight. Go to Biden. Wait, we don't want him to fight anything. Yeah, well, if you'd, get, if you'd get in the ring, maybe we'd have some issues solved. Well, I think that we have... He's got to make it there first. I, I hope that people are hearing us that we're <laughs> Just not... talk about Democrats now. We're, <laughs> we're not making fun of... There is There definitely is less opportunity than there was. There always will be. It'll always keep going that way, provided the number of people keep expanding. And, the, and they keep changing laws and things like that. The, the one thing that people don't seem to realize that we probably lose more ground to the farmers out here that are mowing down the trees to make their fields where they go farther. And that's permanent. Yeah, that's not going to. There, there's, you, I mean, you once they. Massive reconstruction there of some timber that's going to take years and years and years to come absolutely. back. Absolutely. Which and, I don't know how you'd ever stop that, though, because we'll. Leases, anything, you'll never be able to pay them enough to be able to match the amount that they can make from... From farming. Yeah. Nor can I be upset with them for trying to make a living. That's their, that's you know, their that, business, that's their, their livelihood. Business, yeah. You know, so um, I have to deal We've with it. We've lost quite a few that have been... Oh, um, they've, like, just place where out. you killed your first deer. Mm-hmm, that's the first one that, I thought that, about. That was the, like... That I mean, place is useless now. Absolutely. There's nothing, there's no timber left, you know. But at the time, it was fantastic. Um, you know, like I said, that's not to the same degree of what I'm talking about, like a shopping mall being in Virginia, Yeah. but it's the same thing. Yep. You know, I mean, it's a place you used to hunt, can't hunt. Honestly, we still have permission to hunt there if you want to go sit out in the middle of the field, you know, because now there's, it's a field. There's all sorts of things that are going to come into play to give you a lower hand or diminish the chances of you finding somewhere to hunt or do this or do that. And that's with anything, though. It so is if you are with anything. Yeah, exactly. So Everybody, if you're if you're committed enough, if you want something, you got to work for it. If and if it's as simple as I want to be able to go sit in a tree stand, okay? If I have to default, default to public. Everybody can do that. If I want something a little better than public, which sometimes it's worse than public depending on how many people get a hunt there, but I'm it, it's as simple as literally saying take some gas Put it in your vehicle and drive around and knock on doors and get tired of talking to people because you're going to talk to so many. It's everybody has that opportunity to do too. Everybody can do that. I think so, it's everything, anything where you're going to, you want the results um, that the top 10% get or the top 1% gets, you're going to have to put in the work that 90% won't. Same thing with everybody with money. Oh, those people got lucky. Okay. Then it, you guys have spent no time ever seeing anybody that didn't inherit a trust. The chances that they got lucky and made a fortune is very minuscule. You got a better chance of killing a 200 inch deer. The chances, which is zero for me. So, all right. Yeah. So basically, it's just it's the same argument that people have about money, about <clears throat> um, literally anything in life. You could blame those guys because baseball players and football players and basketball players and country singers and all that that like to hunt. They buy ground. They lease ground. They go with outfitters. Yeah, I so do not get mad at them at all. Put it on TV yep. and everywhere else. I am jealous of them because they get to buy all that land and they get to play a sport for a living. I wish I was that talented, or maybe I could have been, but I highly doubt it. So I have no issue with people doing that. You know what? You had a talent in life, and you got to get paid millions for it. Go do More it. More power to you, man. And go hunting if you like to. Yeah, actually, I kind of support it. I like when some of those big names hunt because, it, and especially if they do it well or like they present themselves in a good way, it gives hunting a good, uh, a good look and a good light. Absolutely, in my opinion. Good representation. Yep. What I other like did we miss? Anything? Did we miss any? Like, I think we covered enough stuff. Where by the time it's all done, it's only gonna be like twelve minutes long after he cuts out everything that he's got cut oh, out. Well, we only went on a couple ones. Yeah, but they were big ones. 
You're the one that started. Started it. the whole thing in off, the first man. Two minutes. Okay. So then there Whatever. might as well just be no hold barred. Okay. Well, there you go. There you have it. The there's our opinion, and it's and and I hope that you can understand that our opinion is coming at least from me. Comes from every walk of it. I've been the kid that didn't have a place to hunt. I've been someone who was making some money but still couldn't afford it. And then I've been someone that finally got into a position where I could own a piece of ground. And I'm not going to apologize for that, and I don't think I should have to. Um, and like I said, if I if I had my choice, I would own more. I mean, that's 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 my thing. You know, some people buy cars, some people buy stocks, some people buy boats or vacation places. Mine would be to own ground that I can go out and do what I love to do on and take my family to do it. So, anyhow, with that being said. Should have bought Bitcoin 2000. You did a whole bunch of it. Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't know what a coin bit was, so. <laughs> he doesn't know what an ethnicity is either, so. It's an ethnicity. Okay. I'm not, not good. Not it's an ethnic ascendity. David. <laughs> All right, so anyhow, long story short is we sure appreciate you guys. Again, like we said at the top of the show, reviews, send your, let your friends know. Send them the, you know, if you can share this with them, do it. We're just trying to grow this thing as best we can so that we can keep talking about these topics. And um, we're moving toward here pretty quickly. We're going to start bringing some guests in. So um, if you got guests that you think would be a good person for us to interview, let us know who that would be. But other than that, you or guys. maybe we should interview you. Just yeah. Provides a compelling reason why you guys would be a good person to have on the podcast. We can do that. All right. Thanks again. We appreciate you guys. And hopefully you guys are out killing some stuff. So send us your pictures. That's maybe one of the biggest ones. We love sharing the stuff on social media and um, just sharing the stories. I, I, I feel like we are way more in touch with people now. We're talking to more people and things like that because you guys are sending in photos or stories and things like that. So. Thanks again. We're out.